Hey everyone, welcome back to the Learn Script Case from Scratch course. My name is Nate Carpenter and I'm the Script Case instructor leading this course. So as you know, we're starting part two now in this video. So part one, we set up and installed Script Case, got it registered and everything. So now we need to look at some different database uh, tools and functions we need to do for our project that we're working on. So this video is gonna look at installation. So as you can see, we're in part two, we did the intro and setup and everything, and now we're setting up our database. So as you know, we're using the Global Music Supply Company as a fictional case study, a fictional company to kind of guide us. We're building an inventory uh, management system for them. So before we can get started with developing applications in script case, we need a backend database um, to store all the data. So we have three main areas of sale that's going to kind of guide our database structure, uh, sheet music, recordings, and instruments. So those are going to be three main tables, and then we're going to have some supporting tables um, to, to support those, those main tables there as we manage our inventory. So we need a database set up to do this. So our solution is we're going to use a MariaDB MySQL database for this. Um, so we're going to focus on that. Scriptcase does support some other databases, but we're going to focus on the MySQL side um, of this for, uh, for this project. So we're going to create those tables then in MySQL Workbench. That's going to be the main tool that we use for this. And we'll look at that more in um, some next videos and how to use that. We're just going to look at how to get it installed for this video. We're also going to look at some of Script Case's built-in tools uh, to do this, as well as a tool called PHP My Admin, which you can install on your, on your server, which is also very useful. Um, so that way you kind of know all the options um, available to you for this. So let's go ahead and get started with installing our database uh, system. Okay, so here we are on the MariaDB website. And there's some options here, but we're going to go to download here up on the top right here. Click on that. And there's some different uh, versions of this that we want, but we just want um, the, the community server edition right here. Um, but there's some different editions if those might be suited for your needs. We can select our version and then our OS. I'm going to be installing this on Windows, but you can select this one. So MS Windows 64-bit is the one for me. Go ahead and click download on that. And that'll kick us around to this page, which will open up our download here um, after just a second. And then once that pops up here, there we go. We can click save on that or whatever browser, uh, whatever your browser settings are, and then go ahead and wait for the download. So let's come back after this has downloaded and I'll walk you through the install. So here we are. Here is the, the install after we run that. Click next on this, accept the terms again, click next. We can set our, our directories here for where we want everything installed. I'm gonna leave everything uh, to, the, to the default here, uh, but we could change that if we wanted. And then uh, once we've got all those settings set up, we can go ahead and click next. We need to set our root password to make sure that something's secure. This is going to have complete control over our database system. And then if you want to enable a uh, remote access for that root account, you can check that box there, which I'm going to do. And I'm going to use UTF-8 as the, as the default character set. And then uh, some different options here for what you want the service to be named. Uh, the TCP port, all those different settings. I'm going to leave it to the default, and you probably can too, unless you've got some different needs. Uh, you can have it deliver feedback if you want. I'm going to click Next and then Install. So this is going to take just a second here. Um, after it finishes installing, we'll come back and show you how to access it and everything. Okay, so here we all all installed and everything, so we can click Finish on that. And then once that is done, there is an executable install that you can access via your start bar if you're using Windows, uh, just a MariaDB executable. Um, so let me open that up here, and that's going to open up a command prompt console um, here. So let me see if I can find it. So you enter in that root password um, that you set up when you installed. So let me go ahead and type that in, and it's going to redact it, of course. Go ahead and click enter, and there you're on a console to run uh, commands, uh, MySQL commands if you want. So we'll look at more of how to do that in the next one. But we also have MySQL Workbench. So this comes from MySQL. Just go to the website and go ahead and select your version and click download on that. Same thing, it's going to download it to your system and then you can install it and it's pretty easy uh, to use. So in the next videos, we'll look at how to do that. For now, we're going to look at how to connect to this database over in script case. So let's go over the script case now and look at how to set up that connection there. 
Okay, so here we are in the development environment. We got this all installed and registered last time. So now we need to go to a database, but none of those options are there. So we need to create a project. So we're gonna click create a project and then we're allowed to attach a database with that. So we have some options here for some template projects here that you could create and it could be good to experiment with those. But for now, we're going to create a blank project and we can name that. We can put a description in, additional information, and we can also put in a logo for it too, an icon for it as well. For now, I'm just going to name it GMS Inventory, and we could add an image right there. Go ahead and click Next. And it's going to walk us through this wizard process here. So next, we can set up a database. So we need to select our database type first. So as you can see, we have all these different types of databases. We're going to use a MySQL database here. So this is probably the most common, at least for this use case. So we can name the connection here. Um, so I'm going to name it Inventory here. And then the driver is MySQL PDO. And then the server is going to be our local server and our default port. Then we need to set our username here. So this is going to be the username you set up when you set up the database. And we're going to go ahead and type that username and password in. And then once that is done, we can list the databases here. So as you can see, I have our database global music underscore inventory. Then we can test the connection once we have that database selected and the connection was successful. And we could also create a new database here if we wanted. Let's go ahead and click next on this. And it's just going to walk us through the rest of the steps for setting up the project. So we'll go through this again when we look at how to set up a project. Um, but for now, we're just going to go through this quickly. You can set up a application language as well. You can add more languages, as many languages as you want. Go ahead and click next. And then you can select a theme. So there's a lot of themes here. We have some script case themes and some custom themes in, in this setup as well. We're going to select here uh, one of these new SC9 themes. So these are new, very nice looking, very modern looking. So I'm going to do sweet blue. So I'm going to select a theme. I'm going to make it the default. So when an application is created, it's going to use that theme by default. You can add multiple themes to the same project as well. Click next again, wait for that to load, and we should be just about set up and ready to go. And there's a couple more settings for setting up new databases within a project that I want, want you to see. So wait for this new project area to load here. And it's going to allow us to set up a new application, but we're not quite ready for that. We've got a couple more videos before we get to that. So now if we go to the database area up on the top blue menu, we see two options, new connection and edit connection. We can click edit connection to edit the connection that we just set up. So if we need to change the password, choose a different database, etc., we can do that. So all those settings that we saw before are right there. We can set up SSL if we want to do that. We can choose which tables we want to see or views and some different encoding, decimal se settings, all those different things. And then we can also do a new connection here. If we select a new connection, all the same settings that you saw before. And then we have, we can import some data from Access or Excel or CSV. Then we have database builder, SQL builder, and diagram. So we're going to look at those in the next videos. But for now, that's how you install a database in Scriptcase. And I'll see you in the next videos for this course.